go get my bag, please. Downstairs. Yes, I know. Jesus Christ. I tell you, I'm probably a bit of a bitch. If I don't like you, then I don't like you. Oh, gosh, yeah, she's got a mouth on her. It's on you. Nadia's attendance at college was so bad, she was asked not to return. I hate the teachers, and they hate me too. So I'm not going to be allowed to go back next year. Bunch of bitches. She isn't silly. This is the annoying thing. I mean, she's passed all her, ex all her college exams. This is what is so annoying. She doesn't have a job, but Nadia still has very expensive tastes. I'm working my way to get a Louis Vuitton suitcase, actually, for my dad, but I don't know if that one will work out. She doesn't do cheap. It's got to be expensive. It's got to have a label. Nadia wants all the finer things in life. She wants the fancy cars and the big houses, but she doesn't realise that she's never going to get it if she doesn't get out there and work for it. I just want to be rich. Money's like my friend. Single mum Gillian split off from her husband and returned to England from the Lebanon when Nadia was eight. Since then, Nadia has played on her father's guilt. If I don't get it for her, then she'll just ring up her dad and he'll give her money and, and then she'll get it. So she's... Well, she's spoiled, basically. I was like, Dad, I want a Range Rover. I worry about Nadia's future. I worry immensely. Emily! Because the way she's carrying on at the moment, I just don't know where she's going to end up. I don't really give a shit. 60 miles away, another teenager is causing problems for his family. You only live life once. You enjoy it as much as you can, really. If it means getting into trouble, it means getting into trouble. But single mother Anna bears the brunt of his behaviour. We know that you've got a bad attitude. No, I don't. Sometimes you have done. So sorry. He's moody. He's lazy. My mum thinks my attitude stinks. Aaron's problems with authority began while he was in school. Teacher, I didn't get on with at my school, but that, that was because one, I was a little shit. I've got quite a few teacher pricks. In his secondary school, I don't think he's done even two pieces of homework for the whole of his secondary education. They said he could be AB student, but he could not be bothered. And it was frustrating for the teachers, almost to the fact they'd give up on him. He thinks it's more fun just to be, like, a loser. <laughs> Aaron recently began a mechanics course at college. But his mum is fearful that history will repeat itself and he'll soon be thrown out. He might like the teacher what he's got now, but if they get a new one who doesn't gel with Aaron, Aaron will be rude to that person and then he will walk out. Aaron's parents separated when he was two. I spent one week at my mum's house, one week at my dad's house. And things took a turn for the worse when he was 14. His entire family was affected by the premature death of his grandmother. He does really miss his man. My mum educated Erin. She looked after him so I could go to work. You know, she's, she's been a big part of Erin's life. It always happens to the nice people kind of thing. To try and get them to start thinking about their futures, both families are sending their wayward teens to live with new parents in India. Have a really nice time. What was that? See you later. Yeah? yeah? No, really. Just enjoy yourselves, yeah? Take care, yeah. All right. I love you. Love you too. See you later. Bye, darling. Bye. Bye. I would like Erin to come back and just be a little bit calmer, a little less aggressive, uh, maybe stop smoking, maybe have more family respect. Do you want help getting it out? Do you want help? I said yes. Oh. There you go. Well done. Right, let me shut the door. Have a lovely time. <laughs> Have a lovely day. Behave yourself. I will. Do try to take on board what they tell you and listen. Yeah. Right. Bye. Be careful. Look after yourself. Bye. I feel quite nervous, really. I feel quite nervous for her. She's going away. I just hope she behaves herself. Although, I'll be surprised if she does. Oh, my God. I'm so scared. Hi. Right. Hello. Hi. Hello. What's your name? Mara, what's yours? Nadia. Hi. I'm a Bellens. 
That's nice. <laughs> no, it was, my, it was my nickname for a while. I am a villain. Did you get yeah. it made? Yeah, I got made up Camden. Oh. The British teens are flying 5,000 miles away to the Indian city of Bangalore. Home to over 13,000 millionaires, this bustling city is a technological powerhouse helping to push India toward being an economic superpower. Single mother Nalini owns her own business which teaches cultural awareness and industry. She's also a dedicated charity worker. Her daughter, 18-year-old Niska, is one of three children and studying at university. And grandmother Lalita is the head of the household. Ma, sorry. No, 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 it's okay, it's okay, stand there. My mother was very, very strict. For example, uh, education was considered uppermost. We had to perform well. Today, Nalini insists that daughter Niska studies twice as hard. She will do whatever it takes to get me educated. So I'm expected to get good grades at every level. And if I get average level, she yells at me. Why have you written it like this? No, this is not good. Go back and check the other one. 15 years ago, Nalini's husband passed away. So it was down to her to ensure that all three of her children achieve their full potential. Nehar is my eldest son. He has done his engineering here. He's now working in London with Bank of America. The second son, he did an MBA in finance. And now he is also in London. I'm Nalini Akka. I'm from the Rotary Club of Bangalore. Coming from a wealthy family, Nalini likes to give back to her community. Healthy living. And her commitment to charity is well respected. Put your table straight, please. Put it straight. No, no, no. Make, put this into that. No mess allowed, okay? If you're doing nothing, you must start clearing up the mess. Some job, okay? What I say goes. It has to be respected. Um, because I have a reason for everything I say. This is so that all of us can live together in harmony. After a 12-hour flight, the British teens have arrived in Bangalore. It's India's third biggest city. They all like drive crazy. Show your babes. They all stood to their horns, don't they? This is a weird country. It really is. No, I wouldn't be able to live here. No. It's too different from like what my life is actually like. Yeah. I was like just walking down the shop and like being able to go to top shop. Obviously, they're not going to have that here. Yeah. It's like a cow right walking in the street. It's like so dirty, like, look at that. You might have to live on this street, do we? Watch when we do now. Watch when we do. Oh, my God. The Nanjandeyas live in the middle class area of Jayanagar. This is going to be a fun week. <laughs> oh, God. It is all right, though. Hello. Hi. Hi, I'm Nalini. Hi, I'm Nalini. Welcome to the Nanjandara yeah, household. I'm Aaron. Hi, Aaron. I'm Nalini. This is my mother, Lalita. I'm Aaron. This is my daughter, Nishka. Welcome. Can I help you with something? No, it's okay. For the next seven days, Aaron and Nadia must abide by this family's rules and values. Let me show you around the house. This, Nadia, is going to be the room you will share with uh, Nishka. Okay. So I hope it's all right sharing a room yeah, with her. Yes, fine. This is Aaron's room. All right. Yeah. Okay. If there's anything you need, water for you, everything is there. Okay. Thank you. That one, I'm going to put it in. Yeah, that's your cupboard. Yeah, that's your home. <laughs> you go to um, like university or college? Yeah, I'm in university. What are you studying there? I'm doing a bachelor's in business management. Oh, okay. It's it's nice. It's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, like, uni life and college life is good fun. I know it sounds really horrible, but I didn't think she'd be like it's like smart and that she'd be at university and doing what she's doing, just because like when we were driving around, like the way it looks and people like like walking around the street barefoot, I wouldn't expect her to be like at university and like she's really smart and like doing really well. They're not what I expected, 
they are completely it's completely the opposite i thought they'll be you know very uh, like completely wild and crazy in their appearance and stuff but they are very calm and docile oh it could be an act absolutely this could be an act they're probably this could be the calm before the storm could be joined by two members of her extended family Nalini is eager to let the British teens know how her household runs. Rules of the house. In this house, we concentrate on ambition and education and then discipline. Everyone must have ambition. Uh, without ambition, we're not going to achieve anything. You will be attending school for three days. You will have to attend. Homework will have to be done. And I expect uh, a very good report from school. Respect to elders. We have lots of elders sitting here. My mother here is 83 year old, and while she has been keeping quiet, she is actually the head of this house. No smoking, no alcohol, no drugs. Now, I hope none of you are smokers. You are. Aaron is. Aaron is. Mm -hmm. What else do you do, Aaron? Um, I smoke weed and I drink. You smoke weed in your drink, okay? We will not be allowing you to do that in this house. And it's not part of the culture here, so you, you might want to give it up. I hope you're not carrying anything with you. Some are you? I don't have any weed or any alcohol or anything. I have my fags, but my fags are staying with me. It's I'm sorry, I'm around. sticking with that. No, I'm sticking with my fags on me. Okay, but I expect that you do not smoke it. Okay. Sure? Dressing, Nadia. What you're wearing right now is inappropriate in homes and in the marketplaces and things like that. It's inappropriate because people around us are going to get a little shocked. So I can't wear like vest tops or shorts. No. If you are dressed like this now, you'll have eyes ogling at you. That makes one feel very uncomfortable. They Aaron is fine. You are absolutely fine. Why Except do I do not understand what yes. that <laughs> What is a bell end? Uh, <laughs> It says I'm a bell end. Do you know what it means? Not really. No, we don't. No, we don't. Back in like, London, people find it funny. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I expect your best behaviour out of the house because outside behaviour has got to be impeccable. Right? Dad, do you have any questions? No. You may leave the table now. I admire the Aaron's honesty that he smokes and he does weed and uh, I hope he appreciates that we, you know, he cannot do that in our house. I think Aaron might, might act up a bit but I think, I think he's quite sweet actually but I don't know, I think maybe him? I think both of them may have uh, uh, some thoughts about the rules and they may not uh, appreciate many of them. Can I go home now? What's the problem? They, they think I'm actually going to not smoke. It's not happening. I'm fashion conscious, so I don't really appreciate it when she's like telling me that I should wear different clothes. It's like me, I've dressed myself, I shouldn't have to like change for them. Whilst the teens change out of their flight clothes, it's a chance for Nadia and Niska to get to know each other a little better. I'm not really like the good child, I'd say. I could go out till like six in the morning come home when I want. Do you I don't tell your parents where you are? No, my mum like, knows where I go. Like, if I ask her, she'll be like, where are you going? And then she's like, are you coming home tonight? I'll be like, yeah, well, I'll let you know. It depends. That's really good. I would, I would not try that with my mom. She'd be like, yeah, right, you come home and you're not going out ever. Like, I would be grounded, like, housebound. Unfortunately, it's not long before temptation becomes too much for Aaron. I'm proper craving. You can't do shush here. Seriously, you can't. Shush. Dude, you can't smoke here. That's like, what, weed? Hmm? Wait, what are you smoking? A roll is a roll. This is me. It's, it's like changing what I do. But you do know my mum trusted you, that she's, she's I know, trusted I know, you. I know, I know. And you broke your trust. You go and tell my mum herself that you did this. It needed to be done. So just tell her. Inside, Niska has made it clear that he needs to fess up or she'll spill the beans. What's happening? I caved in. Oh, why? What? Where did you cave in? I had, I had a fag. I'm a little upset that you've let me down. 
especially when you so seriously said that I, I won't do this. I would really request you to give me the cigarettes if you can. That way it'll help you not to smoke. You're going to hang on to it. Rather than getting into a row, Nalini's strategy is to patiently sit it out. A rule is a rule, Aaron. So I'd really appreciate it further if you gave me the cigarettes. No. Come on, Aaron, be a sport. Right, I'm actually doing my head in now. Put the stupid pouch on the bloody table. It's tobacco, yeah? Don't, don't start smirking at me. You're actually pathetic. Really? Do you know how stupid you are? We've been sat here for, like, what, half an hour? And oh, because of some stupid tobacco, you won't put it on the table and hand it over? Do you know how pathetic you are? You're so pathetic. Right, so. And you know you are, because you won't be sat there going right, so. and laughing and everything. Cool. You're an idiot. Sweet. Come on, Aaron. How about if I just like, lock it in my suitcase and I'll like, leave a little bit hanging out of the zip after it's locked so you can still see it's in there? And you won't touch it ever? No. As long as you're here, that is? No. Right? Sure? Nadia, would you like to go with Anishka? Aaron's new sisters are sent to police him. I didn't think it was going to be like this. I didn't think one could be so stubborn. We cannot uh, do without rules in this house. There'd be utter chaos. And these are just some rules. There are so many more rules, you know? I just feel like I want to go on. Like, your mum gave me the role that I need to, like, cover up more. So I was like, OK, fair enough, and I did. And then he has to sit there like an idiot, and it's, like, really annoyed me. And I really don't like him either. I just think the rest of this week is going to be shit, to be fair. It's day two of the British teen stay in India, and the first day of Indian school. Good morning, Nadia. What? Get up, get up, get up. We've got to get moving. I'm going to bring your school uniform, Nadia. We're going to school this morning. You'll love your uniform. It's a nice, smart skirt on the top. I have to wear a uniform. Aaron! Mm -hmm. Good morning. Gonna wake up. We're going to school this morning. Mm -hmm. Both Aaron and Nadia have underachieved at their schools back home. Nalini is determined to get their education back on track. Remember that, you know, basically everything depends on your education. Your future depends on how much you study, what education you get, what kind of degrees you get in the future. So please take your education very seriously. Finish. Nalini and the teens are heading here, Bangalore's National Public School. Voted the fifth best school in India, it's fee paying and has a reputation for discipline and excellent exam results. We are very, very strict, okay? Getting a very good grade is very, very important because it's like a passport. If you need to move forward in your life, in terms of your education, as well as, as well as your career, you need to have good grades. Back in the UK, Nadia and Aaron both have a history of confronting their teachers, low attendance and poor attitude. Before lessons start, Principal Chandran wants to inform the British teens of the school's expectations. This is Aaron. Nadia. We expect you to uh, concentrate because the foundation for your future lies in the studies that happens now. The first lesson of the day is English. But before they get underway, the teens are invited to talk about their lifestyles back at home. I have a lot more freedom than what most people in this country do. I drink, I smoke, I, I do drugs. You said that you do drugs. Have you stopped or are you continuing? 
Not whilst I'm here, I'm not. But when I get, but when I get home, I'm going to have a really nice big joint. How well did you do in school? <laughs> uh, I didn't do too great at school. I got two A stars in science, three C's in business, and then I failed everything else. Um, my mum sent me here because I'm quite rude, I don't go to college. Sometimes I come home at like six in the morning and me and my mum don't like get on really well so that's why she sent me here. What's the worst thing you've done to upset your parents? It's probably just like being rude to them, I don't like have probably that much respect for them, I argue with them a lot. So what is your ambition in life? I don't really have one at the moment, I just want to be like rich because I love money. <laughs> Now, uh, I give a little bit of homework for Wednesday and I expect everyone to do it. Now, the homework is my ambition in life and how do I go about getting that. That's it for the class for now. Thank you, class. <sighs> yeah, this is a pain in the ass, isn't it? I really want to fuck off out of here. Out in the playground, Aaron relishes the chance to continue boasting to his new classmates. I, I, I sometimes don't, I just don't usually go home. Like, my mum asked me if I'm coming home, I'm just like, maybe I'll let you know later, and then I sometimes like, forget to ring her to tell her that I'm staying out. Yeah, you have a good time. What's yeah. your curfew then? Oh, oh mine is seven. You're seven. Before it gets dark. How old are you then? Huh? I'm 18. 17. 17. Oh. Wow. I only have a curfew because my mum's a bit of a bitch. Uh, yeah. The next lesson is maths, one of Aaron's least favourite subjects. This is the new function I'm giving you. I want you all to write down what is f of 1, f of minus 3. Yes, sir. Nothing is written. Come here, Aaron. No. No? Then I expect you to meet at 3 o'clock today. Before you go, please come and meet. All right? Oh, no. No. Oh, no. Yes. Not happening. You will. Back in the UK, Aaron's resistance to authority meant that he was constantly thrown out of school. But in India, he decides to jump before he's pushed. Like, Aaron's behaviour was a little bit of shocking to me, no doubt about it. I just left him because I can tackle it a little later. After the class hours, I'll go talk to Mrs. Chandran, but it's quite a shocking it was the first time that's happening to us in our school. At break time, Aaron's still trying to shock the students with tales about his drug taking. You do weed or what? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, well, I do weed, see what happens. <laughs> awesome. But you know, you should like learn the fact that, you know, later on, I don't know, I think I sound really lame and like a parent, but I'm saying, you might think, oh my god, I'm so high right now and this is my life, but later on you are going to, your body is going to just totally die. Like it's going to be, woof, all down the drain. I, I stopped weed for 10 months once. I did stop for 10 months. Ooh, whoa. Then I started again. Despicable. <laughs> <laughs> Neither Nadia nor the Indian students are impressed with Aaron's bravado. Then, but here we find it so weird that they're into drugs and they're smoking. And so we were asking them, like, why? Why do you do it? Like, what is the point? And they were just like, everyone does it there. Everyone. I think that's really stupid because he doesn't realize that now. I mean, okay, fag, do your thing, but don't get a, don't become like, don't make it your life. Aaron's constant bragging has escalated into an argument with Nadia. Aaron's just being rude. I don't want to talk to him. And there's all these girls standing around. He's trying to show off and be an idiot as usual. And I said something about him. Like, oh, you moody bitch or whatever. But I asked him nicely to leave me alone. And he thinks he could talk to anyone like a piece of shit. Aaron's disrespectful attitude has got Nadia angry. Who do you think you are? Take your headphones out and listen to me. Who do you think you are talking to me like that? What's the point of calling me a bitch? I asked you to leave me alone and you call me a bitch. Fuck off. You're the one that hit me first. I told you and to now leave me alone. Shit Don't put your hands in my face. I'm not putting my hands you in You just went like that. You're putting your yeah, hands in your face. You're, you're chatting shit. You're so pathetic. You actually need to grow up. You're so immature. Listen to me. Fuck Don't off. walk off. You're so immature. How are you going to get a job when you can't even... You might be at college. You have no respect for anyone. How are you going to get a job? Ah, uh, hello, Mrs Nanjindaya. Principal Chandran never stands for bad behaviour. 
the boy has been a little insolent in class and now he just walked out. Um, he's near the gates, okay, but he refuses to come inside. Nalini has been forced to drop everything to come and collect the teens. What's going on, Edwin? What happened? She's... Oh, I'm not very interested. Okay, what happened exactly? I want to know. I want to know what happened. No, I'm not going to die. Oh, God, that's not fair. That's not correct. That's not correct. That's not correct. That's not correct. No, that's not correct. Can't have a fag here at all. And you're in the school premises. What's wrong with you? When faced with abusive language, Nalini's culture demands reason rather than raising your voice. No, I'm having a lot of Okay, don't think about it. Talk like an adult. Come on, you're in college, then behave like a college kid, not like a child. Come on. Come on, come on, tell me what it is. No, don't do this. Come on, take it off. Why are you going to snatch something off? I'm going to snatch it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, don't try that language on me. It's not going to work. Come on, what happened? What happened, Aaron? We're going to have a big scene on the road. And it's not a nice thing to walk around the city like this. You understand? Aaron? Aaron, you can't make a scene on the road. In India, it's completely unacceptable to cause such a scene in public. He called me a bitch. You called me a bitch. You told me to fuck off. Did you? I I'm think that's not really sure bad. I'm not sure if was made. So, no, so, so that's your answer. Now, okay, now listen, listen, Just listen. All right, stop it, both of you. Stop it, stop it now. I, I think this is ridiculous. Everything escalates. I mean, there's such a big issue is taking place over nothing. I mean, we've made a laughing stock like we're some kind of fools. These things don't happen in this country. Correct? So have we benefited by this? No. So I suggest we now go home and take it from there. At home, the teens have to face the wrath of Uncle Pradeep. Now, this is a terrible situation where the students, they would, you know, they go back and they'll talk how much ridicule will take place on this now. Over a non-issue, you use such foul language. And I think that is not acceptable. We don't speak like that out here. Have you noticed anyone screaming in this building, shouting loudly, calling people names? We never do that. You have to understand public behavior is very, very important, I don't know. Whatever happens, you have got to self-control has to be exercised. Most important. You got to be friends, yeah. You got to be. I'm mean going to say, uh, why should you be bitter towards each other for some small thing like this? He walks away. Come here, Aaron. Come back. I don't know what's going through Aaron's head right now. I think he just needs to get over the situation and grow up. Like, we don't have to get along, but when we're out, just, like, be civil to each other. He's a child, actually, and he is emotional, and something is bothering him. I can't put my finger on it yet. At dinner time, the family want to get to the bottom of Aaron's problem with anger. My mum knows how, like, I've, like, I've always had a short temper, especially when I like to do a school and stuff like that. So what have you done when you were angry? Punched walls and that kind of thing. Oh. A terrible thing to do, I don't, I don't know. I used to get wound up about the tiniest things, which... So just, what, just what, what said it, the we just said it, silly things. <laughs> That's your solution right there. Hmm. Nalini's family are not letting Nadia off the hook either. Why did your mum think you should come here? Because um, I'm spoiled. Um, I'm like given everything I want. I don't really help out around the house and I stay out till like quite late, so I might come home at like six in the morning, sometimes Ooh. five. Are you happy with that? Are you satisfied with that? I mean how how much can you go out all the time? You know, you're young. Oh party or club Youth, all youth the time. is on your side, but how much can you do that? Think of yourself ten years later. Where will you be? What will you be doing? I don't know. It's, I, I like, don't know what I want to do. I don't no. know where I will be in 10 years' time. In the case of Nadia, it's all just landing on her lap, which should not happen. So she never has found the need to do things for herself. I'm like lazy. I need something or someone to like, push me in the right direction. I think goals have to be given to them, and uh, they need to achieve those goals. One of the Nanjan Daya's family mottos is service before self. They firmly believe in giving back to society. Realising the British teens are utterly selfish back home, Lalini wants to teach them a lesson. 
all of the last week I've heard uh, only about self, me, my problems, I think, I, I all the time. So this time I want you to experience what other people less fortunate than you are going through and to understand uh, how fortunate you both are, you know? If I have any bad behavior, any fighting, any argument, okay? I'm going to be really displeased because remember, you're going to people who are less fortunate and they're going to be horrified if you behave like that, okay? Today, Nalini is taking the teens to volunteer at one of her charities, the local blind school. There are 15 million visually impaired people in India. The Sri Ramala School educates 250 young people aged between 4 and 20. This is going to be very strange for you, but it doesn't matter. It's a learning experience, it's a cultural experience, so things you may not be used to, you may be expected to do, okay? So please go along and do it with the spirit of learning, experiencing what things are in a new culture, all right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The teen's first job is to help prepare lunch for the blind students. Back home, Nadi wouldn't even dream of helping her mum in the kitchen. Please make it nicely. That you wrote, no? that Taking you... orders from the Indian dinner ladies is proving difficult. Okay. Not sure that Nadia can take the heat of the kitchen, another dinner lady steps in to help her out. Good enough, it's alright. I'm not good enough for your cucumber cutting. The next job is to clean the school's dairy cows. Oh, that's bloody disgusting. The school relies on volunteers to keep it going. Mrs. Bacta is determined that the teens complete all the tasks ahead of them. She wants to clean the cow. I'm not cleaning it. I'm not cleaning it. <laughs> Can you rub it? I don't want to rub it. Ah, like that. Oh, it's done another shit. How much these fucking things go toilet, man? After the others have been cleaned, okay. the cows are oh, ready yeah. for milking. Oh, yeah. oh my god. That looks like. Oh. <laughs> I'm scared to touch don't it. Don't talk. Don't talk. Don't make sound. Simply touch. Ah, ah. Oh. Pull it. Pull it. <laughs> it's lunchtime, but before they can eat themselves, Nadia and Aaron must serve the children. After lunch, Nadia and Aaron are introduced to two of the students. Where will you go when you finish here? Will you uh, go back to live with your family? I like to be a teacher, computer teacher, and music also. I want to work in computer. Do you do a lot for your parents? Would you say they're proud of you? My father and mother also very happy. We do help uh, for them. Bringing the water and cleaning. Uh, Cleaning the house. I found it quite shocking when he said that he wanted to work for like a computer company when he's older. Because uh, it's not exactly going to be an easy job for someone that's blind. Like, it's going to be difficult for him, and he'll probably struggle not doing it. But it's good. It's good that he has still has high ambitions, even though he is blind. It makes me feel really selfish. I'd say that they go around helping their mum and they can't even see, and then there's me that just like goes out, thinks to myself. They, they're like really thoughtful, I think, and it makes it makes me look like a shit a shit human being, to be honest. 
That's how I feel. The blind school seems to have had an impact on Nadia. And she's settling well into family life. Nalini has decided to take Nadia shopping so she can bond with the selfish 16-year-old. Do you buy a lot of all this? My dad buys it for me. Oh, isn't that nice? Yeah. This stuff smells nice. And I like this one. She wants to share some of her own life experiences. It's a really nice place. I don't know if I uh, told you this or Nishka told you this. Yeah, Nishka said. Nishka, said Nishka to told me, yeah. That her father died about uh, now 17 years. Nishka was one year old. My husband was always the main breadwinner. So I had to sit down and think that, look, what do I have? What are my options? What can I do? I can't work out of the house. So my only option was to set up a business. I realized one thing in all this, that it is so important for us to be independent from the very beginning. We cannot wait for a tragedy to strike us and then pick up our socks. Women should be independent and to make sure that you have your own money. See, I've never asked anyone for money. I've never have. You shouldn't have to depend on working on your dad to get you things, or your mother, or whatever. Supposing your dad says, sorry, I, I, I've had enough. You don't want to face such a day, right? You want to do your own thing. You like buying clothes. You should be able to afford it yourself. I do need to be independent. I can't rely on everyone, especially my dad, because he's not always going to be there to, like, give me money for everything I need and everything I want. And it's inspiring as well, because if she can do it, and I don't have, like, responsibilities like children, then I should be able to do it too. Nalini is a really special woman, and I, I sort of see her like my second mum now. Nadia's mother is a single mother, hmm? And uh, I understand that there is no, not too much of a relationship between the two of them at the moment. I don't think she really gets to see her mother too much or do much for her mother. I don't really get on with my mum. I don't really like her getting in the way because I'm sort of like a daddy's girl. I just get on better with dad, so obviously I'm going to like him more. Your dad spoils you so much, he doesn't realise that he makes it so difficult for me and it makes you resent me even more. Do you think I enjoy the way we carry on at each other? I don't. I hate it. Later that day, Nalini decides it's time for Nadia to hear from home. Here's a letter from your mother. Oh, she sent me a letter. Mm -hmm. Dear Nadia, I am hoping this week will help you realise some points about yourself. You cannot rely on your father for money. This has to stop. You have to be responsible for your own sake. I think you're aware of how your behaviour hurts me. The fact remains your attitude towards me is foul. There is a side that is extremely... Can I stop for a minute? There is a side that is extremely loving and protective, especially of Julia. I just wish this side of you showed more often. I expect you to take on board everything from this week that makes you realise there is more to life than shopping, spending and staying out until all hours. Julia, Emily and Rosie send their love, and as do I. I do miss you and we'll see you soon. Lots of love and hugs, Mum. I mean to like, make my mum's life a misery. I think it's, I just don't think about her and I'm just thinking of myself. So I just turn around and say stuff and I don't think like how it hurts her or that she's trying really hard to be like a good parent. The teens have been in India for nearly a week. Tomorrow they return to school to present their homework. Yeah, it has been really long since you've done homework. Yeah, like a year. The assignment is to deliver a speech about their ambitions in life. Aaron has begun to reflect on his behaviour back home. I've always known that like, I need more focus and stuff like that. I've always known that, but I've just never pushed myself at college and like work for what I really want and stuff like that. My mum's really worried that I'm going to end up like, not liking my course and dropping out and just like flunking college like I needed school. Nalini 
has always taken a direct interest in her kids' homework. You should read it and understand it and make your own judgment and assessment of it. She believes it's a parent's duty to inspire learning. I think your homework was on ambition and... Uh, oh, well, the English you... one. Yeah, I English didn't end one. up finishing the English one, did yeah, I? So I let's think... do it now, shall we? Okay, then. Now she wants to help Aaron map out his dream of running a garage. Well, we obviously fix cars or what any normal we garage does. We would customise their car to what they want. OK. Say it was like a pickup style, like truck kind of thing and just have like some wham like some really big subwoofer speaker in the back of it like bass speaker so we had like speakers, sound systems sound, sound systems. systems wow see actually quite easy isn't it yeah it doesn't seem easy because uh you've got to get through each stage but yeah no no but planning it out was oh, easy wasn't it, it? Was easy, yeah. come on now we only have to follow out the plan the way that uh, Nalini was going on about some like huge garage for like doing like all this crazy stuff, it was all a bit much for me to like understand at first because I thought it would be like best if we just start something small, but she wasn't having it. The problem with him is, you know, while he realizes he's got potential today when we did the business plan, we, I had to prod him a bit, but he was act he actually came up with some brilliant ideas. Mmm. And you're going to do that next year, right? I do worry quite a lot about failing because, like, I've not exactly passed much in my life at the moment. The teens are preparing for their final visit to Indian school. The entire class is expected to publicly present their private ambitions in front of their friends. My ambition was always to be like Steve Urban, uh, the animal naturalist who devoted his life uh, in transferring these endangered reptiles and wild animals to proper loca localities in the most human and non-tranquilizing way. Nadia takes centre stage. My ambition, I would say, is to own my own fashion boutique on like the London High Street. Um, I'd also like to go and do a degree in business so I could find out the background, obviously finance, all the different things I need to learn for it. Like thinking about it now and seeing how hard that all of you work and study, I do need to like proper education to be able to get a job. Now Aaron must step up to the mark. My ambitions in life is to have like a good relationship, a nice house, nice car. I can only achieve this with my dream, and my dream is to have uh, my own fleet of car garages worldwide that specialises in customising cars. And then here's what I need, it's like knowledge, money and experience. And uh, the knowledge I'll get from college, which is the first thing on the list. Then I'll go to university, and then like, obviously I'll graduate from there. And then I'll, I'll, I'll obviously have to learn to drive. I think you've given us a good idea of how to go about it. Very systematically you have drawn that. presentations have gone well. Her brief spell back in education has encouraged Nadia to reflect on her future. When I first came here, I was like, oh, I don't want to go to college, I don't want to do anything, I'm just going to like find something, go off by myself. But obviously, I'm, I can't do that. No one's going to get along, no one's going to be able to take their career or anything further if they don't have grades or like a degree in something. Even Aaron has realised he needs to make the most of his potential. I'm smart, but I'm just lazy, and I need to like, stop being so lazy and like, just work, work hard. Before the students break up for the holidays, the teens are enjoying hanging out with their new friends for the last time. Wait, wait, wait. Clap. 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 Hello, I missed you. How was school? I had fun, I thought it was good. Really? You like Indian school? Yeah. After Aaron's performance at school, Pradeep wants to give him a treat that might encourage him further. He's taking him to see a private collection of vintage cars owned by a millionaire friend. Oh my god. Yeah, we have some few <laughs> latest cars. Apart from that, we have uh, the more of Good. Really um, good. Yeah. This. Really good. Proper old Mercedes. <laughs> you want to go? Yeah. 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 Yeah
go inside and have a look inside. Yeah, go inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, 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 go inside. Get the feel of it. Oh my! Wow. <laughs> How could you? <laughs> so big. <laughs> Which is your favorite car? That car right there. Mustang. Oh, Mustang. Mm. Oh, this is the left-hand drive. Oh. I'll do anything to like own one of these cars. Do not understand. So that becomes your ambition. Yeah. To own one of these cars. And then when you fulfill your ambition, you have to call me and I'm going to ride with you on that, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> one day, you and me. Oh, this, this car here, um, my nan used to have a, a red one of. Oh. And like, my nan died like years ago now, so it reminds me of like, my nan when I see one. When did your nanny die? Um, it was about four years ago now. Okay. Was it because of old and, age or...? Uh... Uh, she died of cancer. Okay, okay, okay. I'm sure she's there watching you now. And she's watching you and thinking that this guy is going to make me proud. Relax. She's loving looking you down below from there, looking at you. Take care. Come. But I can see you still feel much for her. By that time, how did you cope? <laughs> you know what we'll do? We're going to get you a beetle also here. And that'll be the girl, then you can tell Nanny on top. See, I got your beetle for you. Huh? So we got a Mustang on the line, and we got a beetle to do. So that's, you got a lot of work to do, chum. <laughs> I've now seen two cars that I really like and that I would, I would love to have. But like, if I had a choice between the two, I'm sorry, Mustang, but I, I would have to choose that for my nan. And when he saw the beetle there, suddenly he's gone back down memory lane. When the two parents fall apart, then the nanny comes into the picture and takes care of the child and gives him all the love and affection, and he would have got that from her. He's feeling so much so. That's why I said he's a very emotional guy, and straight away he connects beetle and nanny and love, affection, all those things came back to him. Four years ago, I lost my mum to cancer. We didn't put my mum in the hospice. We looked after her. She was only 63. Well, my nan used to take me on her bike to school, pick me up after school sometimes. It was her first grandchild. She saw him being born. The night it happened, I didn't really show much emotion. I don't think he really cried. Well, he didn't show me that he cried, because he knew um, how upset I was. I had to stay quite strong for my mum after it happened. He doesn't talk to me about it, but I think he... He does really miss his nan. I've actually got a picture of her in my suitcase. Can I show you now? Yeah, yes, please. That's a picture of my nan in the locket. Oh, <coughs> she looks so lovely. Like, after my nan passed away, like, I think everything sort of got worse for me. Like, my behaviour changed at school and... I don't know, I think just everything changed the way I am. Like, I should have really like, tried help out my mum and like, try to make her life easier, but instead like, I just made it more difficult for her without even meaning to. I don't think I'd like, ever like, go over my nan's death. Like, it's, it's one of those things you just don't go over. You know, Aaron, death is something that we all have to deal with. Now, when my husband died, exactly like you, I couldn't grieve. Mm. You can't sit and grieve when you've got three children to look after, you know? I had to start life afresh. I had to come back to India. I had to uh, start looking for a job, to pay the bills. So, you know, life goes on. There's no point in clinging on to things. Yeah, it was, you know, you really got to look at the beautiful memories you have. I think the family are really nice, like, they're all there for each other. It's something that I wish that I did more often with my family.
The Brit teens are enjoying their last night with the Nan Jundays, a slap-up meal in Bangalore's finest hotel. What do you think is really something that you're going to take home with you or is going to keep uh, something you're going to remember this Bangalore? So I need to realise that I'm really lucky for what I have and stop spending my dad's money because I already have enough in life, I don't need any more. Fantastic. You give me a shake on that. Aaron and I have got closer. I mean, we, we, we have this maybe a sibling, actual sibling relationship. And, I, and it's quite fun, like, you know? And since I've been living here, like, I've, I've liked the way that, like, you've, you all stick together, like, as a family. And um, the way that you just all work together and do stuff together. All the best. Cheers. Okay, all the best you have, yeah? Cheers. You've been very happy. Great having you guys here. Good day. <laughs> It's time for the British teens to leave the Nanjundayas and return to their own families back home. OK, Nadia. Nadia. Oh, I'm going to miss you. Lovely. It was lovely having you. And you're a lovely guy. You are so sweet, so considerate. Just keep that up, OK? With your mom. All the best, champ. Yeah, it's OK. I really am going to miss the Indian family because it's like I've only just got to know, like proper know them kind of thing. There's still more to know about them than we're like leaving already. And they weren't as bad as what I thought they was going to be. Like, I thought they were really strict, but they were actually really nice. And since I've been here and seen how Nishka and Melanie are together, it's made me really like miss my mum. So I just want to give her a big hug and tell her how much I love her. I hope she comes back having lost the attitude that she's got, the superior attitude. <laughs> Hello, Mummy Kin. Hello, Nadia. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Yeah, fine. Did you have a nice time? It was actually really good. How was it? Yeah. You enjoyed it? And I say, like, out of everything that, like, they taught me and the way they are to each other is that I need to respect you more. And if we have, like, a problem, then I should, like, sit down and talk to you about it instead of getting angry. And I also learned that I need to stop sponging off Dad and, like, I need to work for stuff. Um, plus, I want to go back to college anyway because I'm bored of being at home and being nowhere and I really don't want to end up in Tesco stacking shelves, as you lot always keep telling me that I'm going to end up doing. <laughs> oh, come here, Mother. <laughs> I miss you, though, lots, and I, I love you lots. Lot. I love you too. <laughs> I am really, really pleased that she says that she's going to go back to college and that she's realised the importance of it and that she can do it for herself. Hello. Hello. Hiya. You all right? Oh. I, I've realised now that I, I need to treat you with some more respect than what I used to. Yeah. And I think Nam would be, like, quite proud that I actually went to India and I did do it. I did, I did it all. I'm going to talk to, to Aaron about his nan again and explain to him about grieving and um, show him a bit of closure, really. Mm -hmm.